BBC Radio 1. If I were to say to you, what thing are you most proud of in your career? Oh man, like what, Parkinson's. Like what jumps out? Go. What I'm most proud of? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that one. That was great. That was a good gig to get. Um, I went to the audition with my mum. Uh, that was nice walking out of that room. I did a film called Lion, which really um, kind of uh, remolded me as a human. Mm -hmm. uh, the director on that, Garth Davis, is just like a beautiful soul. Yeah. And he took me somewhere personally on a journey that you know when you just you get a gig and it really just changes you it nourishes you that that was special i wanted to ask where's the bafta how's the bafta the bafta i mean i just about walked off stage and uh mama patel had kind of she's taken it and uh, paraded <laughs> she was like it around rugby yeah 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 i think she took it to the care home that she works at showed everyone there um now it's i think it's pride of place at, at her house how grateful are you to your mum for noticing the advert for the Skins audition in the Metro? Oh, I mean, amazing. I mean, she, she uh, totally, she had this crazy sixth sense and kind of dragged me, um, you know, tooth and nail to this open casting and... Because uh, you had no experience acting. Not, yeah, I mean, I did it as a GCSE subject. Okay. Um, but it's kind of one of those like, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory moments where you see the and she just torn out this little ad from the Metro. We had this massive argument that night as well. So like, you know, there's no, there's no Indian dudes on TV and like, are you crazy? Like, I, I don't even know. Well, I mean, like this is, um, and she's just like, just we're taking the day off school and uh, going to this weird open casting. I'd really thought she'd lost her mind. Um, I salute her, that is. Yeah. That's force of will, isn't it? And she's it? not really like a drama mum, you know. Okay. Like, so it really was just so out of the blue. And two seasons later, I mean, that changed your life forever, it right? It did, it did. And it's because of, stop me if I'm wrong, and I know you've told the story so many times, <laughs> but is it Danny Ball's daughter, Caitlin? Uh, yeah. Was a fan of Skins, saw you, was a fan of you, and recommended you to Danny. It, yeah, he'd been out in India and the UK and uh, uh, where else? Yeah, in America casting with all these... I don't even know if I had an agent yet at that point. Uh, maybe I just about signed with an agency. Um, so I kind of missed the boat on the main casting call. And it was, you know, Danny, had literally, I think he'd come back from a long day of casting and uh, I was on the TV and his daughter was like, what about that guy? And, what uh, about? I was probably doing gyrating okay. naked, <laughs> horrible skin, big ears. And he's like, yeah, I think he would, he would be good to. <laughs> Leading man material. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get him in the hot seat. Yeah. That is, um, I love that. I love those stories. Yeah. But I want to ask you that kind of general question again. What are your fondest memories of working on Skins? Like, mm. what are the key scenes, moments, memories that jump out at you? For it was really there? like, there was no like ease into it. And, uh, you know, they, they say speed rolling. And I'm like, I don't even know what any of those things mean. And then the only word I knew was action. And it kind of just, it was so fresh. To have your friends turn their backs on you. Yes, I've been. Hi, buddy! Mom! A respectful boy, at least wear something in bed. I had the time of my life, you know, we were, we were bunking off school to shoot this weird TV show in Bristol, <laughs> and I'd, I'd live these two separate lives where I'd, you know, you know, be at school doing maths and then I'd, on the weekend I'd get on a train and be shooting this TV show. I love those moments, I love hearing those original, yeah. that's where it is. And now look how far you've come, you're in a yeah. movie directed by Manu Iannucci. And I know this is weird to say out loud but I can't help myself. With Hugh Laurie, Tilda Swinton, yeah. Ben Whishaw, you've got Paul Whitehouse in this. <laughs> it does, does Slightly it, different tone. How many pinch yourself moments, I mean that's, yeah. that's colossal. And also you did Best Exotic Marigold Hotel where yeah. you've got Judy Dench, just to name The key is just to surround yourself with really talented actors so no one can tell that you're a fraud. <laughs> but genuinely, this movie in particular, it must have been hard not to just, when the cameras aren't rolling, just take Hugh Laurie to one side for a moment, maybe over craft services yeah. and say, tell me everything. Yeah, Hugh's... Uh, it was like, because we had this two week um, rehearsal period Mm -hmm. And I did these little workshops with, you know, it was first me, Tilda, Swinton and Hugh Laurie. And uh, before we even got to the text, they just were sitting there talking and the, they created this whole history for their characters. And there was just years worth of history they'd spoken about just to put into this text and created this funny moment where kind of Hugh drifts off 
into his imagination and Tilda has to kind of click him back to the present. And I was just watching that and I was like, God, I'm so lucky, you know, like, um, and he, he's really funny, Hugh. Like mm -hmm. he, he just, his face, he's like a contortionist with his face. Um, and then, uh, you know, I had that with like Ben Wishaw and you're watching Ben come in and kind of dissolve. And then you lose Ben and he just becomes this other creature. And it was really amazing, man. Yeah. How hard was it not to insult your professionalism here to not laugh at certain moments? Yeah, well, the funniest guy in the room is Armando. <laughs> And we'd be doing these extensive rehearsals and then Armando's like, why don't you just do it like, and then you do something crazy. And you're like, that's amazing. He really pushes the kind of physical humor, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, every time you do camera work, everyone's like, be smaller. You know, the camera mm -hmm. can read, you know, they can see inside your pores. And there's this director, you know, just telling me to, you know, embrace the gangly. So yeah, <laughs> the gangle. Please may that be called your autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> Dev Patel, embracing yeah. the gangly. Yeah. That's amazing. An awkward biography, yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. Again, to rewind back to Slumdog Millionaire, how much of the Jaiho dance could you remember right now? Oh, dude. Shoot me now, please. Um, that was sprung on us last minute. I mean, Shut I've got up. two left feet. Um, so they said, oh, by the way. There wasn't, wasn't in the script. script, and we're filming, and Danny, I think, the driver he had taking him to work would always play this Bollywood song. Little fun fact, it wasn't Jai Ho, the song we danced to, it was another Bollywood song. So we're, I'm like doing this, like to this other Bollywood song. And then A.R. Rahman, the, the composer, had changed it. But he said, oh, by the way, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to make you do this kind of uh, massive kind of dance sequence in the busiest station in India, live in front of all the public. And I was so nervous that he made me at the end of shoot days. He brought out a jukebox and made me and Frida my co-star dance, uh, just kind of flash mob style that, in the middle of a platform. That is like, <laughs> that's like, a, 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 not cruel, but it's like almost like the perfect way if you were ever feeling awkward in your life, yeah, yeah. this will iron it out <laughs> of you yeah. forever. The thing yeah. is, I'd imagine if you're ever at a wedding, it just must be tempting to go. Oh, still, if you, that's why I don't go to Indian weddings anymore. Because <laughs> as soon as I walk in the room, the DJ are like, ah, ah, you know, you do, ah. <laughs> And I'm like, no, no, that's not appreciated. You could just, just hear yeah. the needle being lifted just, up. Yeah, hide in the bathroom. <laughs> Great weddings. Uh, I'd like <laughs> to ask you what it was like to be you at that time when it came out, because to my mind, and this is just my memory, there was no bus in London that didn't have your face on it. Oh man. That Slumdog Millionaire fever, let's call yeah. it that. Everyone was obsessed with that movie. It was such a big deal and we were all so proud of it. I like to think when it oh, won Best you. Picture and all of that. What was it like to be you and be thrust into the limelight in that way? Um, it was quite overwhelming. Uh, it's that typical cliche where we really didn't know. I mean, there was a lot of talk of the film not kind of getting a release or anything, so we were prepared for that. Um, I we finished Skins, managed to get this gig, and then we'd finished shooting it, and then I kind of dissolved back to reality and back to my box room in Rainer's Lane. And uh, uh, then all of a sudden we get a call that, oh, we're going to go to Toronto, and it kind of just... They'd already taken it to the film festival prior and it had won the award there and I turned up in my River Island suit and my school shoes and it was just so, all so new and there's like paparazzi outside the door, you know, chasing my mum and it was very, uh, it's kind of like someone had flicked a switch really at that, at that time. Um, and uh, yeah, you're walking down these carpets with these, you know, glorious kind of in individuals, these big movie stars and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? Um, but it was just uh, lots of pinch yourself moments mm. and, and stuff like that. Talking of that article in the Metro, I remember one time I was, I got on the train around that time and uh, I was traveling to the central London. I couldn't drive at the time and mm -hmm. I was on the front page of the very uh, um, newspaper that I'd found the Skins audition, my mum did. And I remember just one person looked at it and then kind of looked up and then another and the whole carriage, you know, like a can of sardines were just like descended on me. It was mad. Amazing. Yeah. You got piranha yeah, on a yeah, train. Yeah, like seagulls on a, on a chip, a plate of chips <laughs> or something, yeah. Amazing. Anyway, we should talk more about this new film because there's just something inherently amazing about any Dickens novel. But this one, I'm kind of amazed it's been like 50 years since the last like film adaptation of this like mm. story. Is it? Oh, for Some, wow. Something crazy like that. Could you tell me how Ormando first pitched it to you? Because this isn't your traditional uh, David Copperfield adaptation. Well, it was really strange because uh, I uh, 
I didn't know it was about Charles Dickens at the beginning. It was, I was kind of in transit and it was, I got this kind of hasty email from the agent saying, you know, do you want to meet Armando Iannucci? I was like, yes. He's like, he's got this David Copperfield movie he wants you to be David in. And I was like, oh, David, David Copperfield, all right. Yeah, yeah, he's a great magician. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess I kind of, you know, could cut the hair and wear the black t-shirt to the meeting or something. Uh, I kid you not, and I sat down and then I, Armando laid bare this story that I'd completely missed in my childhood. <laughs> uh, and uh, I hadn't read the script. It was the first time I said yes to something uh, that I hadn't read you know, before. Um, thank God, because it was like a 200 page opus. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was this kind of modern way of looking at things and it, it is timeless Dickens, you know? Uh, and uh, I really like the idea of you know, playing this role and yeah. He's an immensely likable character that goes through a heck of a lot. Hmm. Uh, there are some really good moments where you smash bottles, and I was just thinking, oh, that was a good day, wasn't it? That was a brilliant day. Just going, That's the best. What should we do? I'm going to vent some anger. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had um, specific like sugar glass bottles, and they'd spent a lot of time being like, Dev, now that bottle, you can smash that one, no smash. I'm like, got it, got it. And then as soon as they call action, I grab the wrong one. <laughs> it's like glass everywhere. Um, I but, love uh, the direction, Dev, yeah. no smash. <laughs> Dev. Smash. Smash. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. I want to ask a few um, quickfire questions because I always forget to do it at the end and I'm just going to do it now. Yeah. When you're shooting abroad, whether it's Australia or America or India or wherever you are, mm. what things from Britain do you miss that you wish you could have brought along? Um, especially in America, they don't have baked beans, like our style baked beans, like Heinz. For shame. Yeah, it's a, that's a big problem. It's a problem. Yeah. Uh, tough to, to get some good baked beans, so yeah. Nightmarish. When you get stopped in the street, and I suppose this depends on the location, right? What typically are people saying to you? Because I'm imagining it varies. Yeah. Some people. Oh, you're great in Life of Pi. That's a good one. I'm like, oh, wrong, wrong Indian guy. <laughs> but I'll take it. Sometimes I roll with it. Yep. Yeah. I always say a compliment's a compliment. Yeah. No matter how barbed or wrong it is. Yeah. <laughs> there's part of you that just has to go. I mean, there's a tiger in it. I kind of did a movie called Lie, and I don't know. <laughs> He's Patel, Pi Patel. I get it. That is very generous. Yeah. And how does it depend in America and, and Britain and wherever you are? Like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of the same. People are really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please still be nice. I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> He's an actor, darling. Um, <laughs> And what advice would you have given your younger self? We've talked about um, embracing the gangly, but <laughs> to go back to your 17-year-old, 16-year-old self, are there any words of comfort or advice you'd like to give? Oh, man. Young Dev? Okay. Uh, wh what would I give my younger self? I would say it's like a really cheesy kind of one-liner, one but I would say, uh, you know that, that thing that people talk about, about being here now? Mm. That's real deep, yeah. There's I like that. that. But no, really, because you know, it's like uh, just being in the moment and being present is uh, one of the most uh, important tools to have, especially if you're, you know, working in front of a camera or whatever. But just like in life, just being yeah. in a social situation and constantly feeling anxious about how you did I do this right or did I do that, and it takes up so much brain space or Preach. just worrying about the future. So be here now, Dev, young, young Dev. That's so true. Uh, quoting Oasis, always good. <laughs> and what now, uh, again, look, let's just call a spade a spade here. You're a film star. No. <laughs> yes, you are. That's weird. Uh, you are front and center of many movie posters. What luxury that's come with being a film star have you got so used to so quickly? <laughs> if you, what do you think? What do you think? If you got on an economy class flight. Yeah, okay, there you go. That's that's true. Would you be like, oh, I sound like an asshole. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, the egg, extra leg room and, uh, is nice. And <laughs> You're a tall guy. Having, you know, silver cutlery, it's a real, <laughs> real pleasure up, up in the sky. And I'd like to ask you about, for example, Slumdog or Skins in particular. And now, you've been in many ensemble movies is what I'm trying to get yeah. at. Are there elements of just like, you get to kind of tip the cap to all these amazing people? All the time. All the time. I mean, like, cle cle like cheeky se segue, but it really is, that's what Copperfield's about. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's about, embracing who you are and, and, and the people that got you there. And, uh, and, and, and when you get to a place of privilege or success, mm -hmm. making sure you, when you're at the top, you send the elevator back down for your friends or whatever, you know? Um, 
that's really what the film's about. Yeah. You know what? At the end of these interviews, I always want to have like a perfect wrap up moment. Yeah. And you just did it. Okay, cool. So uh, I salute you again. <laughs> you and your mum, I salute you both. Thank oh, you so man. much. I love that. Have a great day. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>